You're listening to Well, I Laughed, part one of Plenty of Fish in the Sea, Devil in the Details. So first off, because who knows where this episode's actually going to jump in in. Yeah. Um, yeah, today's Thursday. So two days ago, mm-hmm. I borrowed one of the ring lights and cameras mm-hmm. so we could record a couple student performances for a virtual competition. Um, I had been meaning to get my exhausted carcass over here and pick it up <laughs> at some point. Oh, yeah. But it just, like, did not happen. And so we had to pony express it from you to Jacob and Lydia's, to Jacob and Lydia's to my place, yep. sorry, to my school, to my school's admin to my own uh, classroom. And That's that was so fun. so funny. Very fun, very sweet. My big takeaway is... <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> people are enchanted by the ring light oh, in yeah. a way that has, I think, lost some of its glamour to us. Like we, I mean, live from the studio, we have a couple of lights that we're always operating with. So the fact that everyone was like taking a selfie with the ring light, I was like, come on, They were guys. taking a selfie with the ring light? Yes, which is actually funny because there's nowhere to put your phone. So they were just turning the ring light on and then like with the lighting like whole hand holding their phone to get like a picture using the ring light gives you good light part of me is like act like we've been here before folks come on like it's just next time a i'll ring send light. you with the with the camera <laughs> phone holder so you can have selfie time with it thank you so that was my that was my big fun little moment on tuesday was like oh, i remember when i was impressed by a ring light and more importantly i remember when that was all we had <laughs> It was ring light and then big overhead light, which... Remember when we didn't even have the sound panels and I just threw blankets over everything? Um, yeah, a little bit. Kind of like a crazed Miss Haversham. The woman who, after getting left at the altar, never changed out of her wedding dress. (laughs) (laughs) I vibe with that. I like that energy. So, um, that was a real highlight. We did a little speech and debate trip to Mm -hmm. Atlanta, Georgia this last weekend. Um, that was super fun, too. I now have just kind of continuously worked, but that's fine. Yesterday, I kicked all the kids out early, so that way I could go over to our friend Danny and Sophie's. Oh, right, right. And we could have frozen pizzas and hot tubbing time, which is a lot of fun. And then at 7, I was like, so sorry. I got to hop on a call real quick. Oh, for yeah. One of the Tyler did tell me this, yeah. And so I uh, had intense FOMO. And then I emerged, and I was like, okay, white claws and hot tub. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> So there's been a lot of joy. There's been a lot of work, but there's been a lot of joy the last couple of days too. So I'm I'm doing I'm doing all right. How are you? So tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I haven't done ever... nearly the same amount of things that Grant has done. I'm just <laughs> exhausted. Maybe that's because I'm depressed. Um, mm. I don't know. One or the other. We'll see. Por qué no los dos? That's true. That's really true. Um, yeah, I spoke at Leadership Summit on Saturday. She which was, killed it while speaking at Leadership Summit. Which was good. It was painful to watch the video back, but it's fine. I did it, and I, po- I even posted it on YouTube, despite myself. Um, oh, Here, world, here's my vulnerabilities. <laughs> I even, in, in the description, I was like, this is Maya's first speaking engagement. Please be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually say that, but... That no. was the spirit of it. You killed it. I looked at your speech. I thought you did great. I gave you a lot of feedback, and then you completely changed it, making me feel like you didn't like my feedback, but that's fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I did use your feedback in a lot of places. No, no, I'm absolutely joking. The joke's fun. Whatever. Sorry. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Do you know uh, what I actually talked about to the kids today mm. in class? So funny you mentioned this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... Today, because with the advanced speech kids especially, like my job, when you have a whole mess of them, like I do, in first period, uh, you're there to inspire. You're there, <laughs> you're there to kind of motivate. You yeah. are, every day you walk into that room and you're like, what would a coach say in the locker room at halftime? Down two scores, state championship game. And that's just what yeah, you're yeah. trying to like deliver to them in a non-secular way at like 8.30 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could never. <laughs> and so all of January was inputs equals outputs, mm-hmm. right? Like what you get is going to be a direct correlation to what you put in. Today, you got a little bit more real, a little less theoretical. I'm like, today sucks. 
today today just sucks both because it's a Thursday in February but also the concept of like this is as Dr. Brene Brown would say <laughs> absolutely I know and I still quote her like she's a friend if Fair you enough. are listening just thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you Barbie <laughs> thank you Thank you so much. Um, I was like, Dr. Brene Brown would refer to these as day twos. Day one is easy. You have all the motivation. You have none of the inertia against you yet. You like jump right on in. And everyone has a day one on all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. It's day two, three, and four where like the goal gets lost Mm -hmm. because that's when things are now a little like more sore, right? Yeah. The motivation's a little less. Or maybe the motivation's still there, but the result wasn't immediate right away, Mm -hmm. right? So day two, day three, those are always the hardest. So then I look at the kids and I go, the entire month of February is a day two. This is when, if you wanted to be better at school, that That's stops. Time, yeah. That falls apart. Yeah. You just want to crawl into bed more. That's just your body's nature telling you what to do. You um, told yourself you were going to eat more vegetables and you can't put down the hot Takis, right? Like, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> You're going to spend more time with your family and yet your screen time is going up uh, right now. Yep. And while you still care, you're worried about what your own capacity is in all of this. And because yes. you thus don't feel like you're meeting it, it becomes like this doubling down of like, I didn't do it and I can't do it. Yeah. And you can. not You're just in day two, also known as February. <laughs> um, and so everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I go, and so when we're at state in a month. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's like a, what did you <laughs> Never say if I'm ever, like, when we're in state in a month, I want you to think about what you're going to feel like when you walk out of round two and you're afraid you just lost to a kid you know you could have beaten. You're not going to win that round on that day. You're going to win that round right now. And I'm so sorry that it has to be right now. <laughs> like, I really am. But it has to but happen right now. But it's happening right now. Decide how state's going to happen today. That's just all of life, my friends. So we're getting more or less inspired after that. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to, with like my tiny little dials, like decrease anxiety, but you know, <laughs> increase work ethic. I'm ultimately trying to help them um, develop an equilibrium. And I do that by being unbalanced in my oh, own advice. Oh, yeah, that's fair. It works. Thanks. Yeah. Is it that why you just started shouting at me for the word unbalanced? It's really keep me on my toes i, would, I just I, I haven't had a private moment to myself <laughs> i can see it in your eyes since january yeah <laughs> when we get tired grant starts talking mm. and i shut down <laughs> that's what the entire day was do you know what my advanced class <laughs> sorry <laughs> yesterday was wednesday yeah you'll know what wednesday it was yesterday do you know what my lesson plan was yesterday what? John Brown. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the kids were like, run it back. <laughs> I had a kid come in today during period seven. I'm my, uh, my other advanced class. Smart kid. Mm-hmm. Great. Very inquisitive, this group of kids. Sometimes they say things that are super funny, but I'd have to type up in a report if it was like a different kid. Yeah. And I'd have to be like, you got to reel that back in. <laughs> you, you know your audience. You're actually killing it right now. Wrong setting. You just can't say that Wrong here. Wrong setting. Yeah. Um, in a couple years at a beer. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this kid comes in and he goes, mister, can we do more lessons like the lesson we did yesterday? Which again... Just a podcast. Thank you, Barbie. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, could you could you explain what Why? you mean yeah. about lessons like yesterday? Like, we did a lot in that 53 minutes. What specifically did you like? And after a quick little discussion in which some of the other ones jumped in, too, basically it was like justifiable rampages. Could we learn about more justifiable <laughs> ra- rampages? Same. Could we, could we do that? <laughs> And the thing is, the whole lesson was centered around an essential question, John Brown, hero, or Or. domestic terrorist. Um, I can't ask you that question every day before it loses its novelty by the third day, you know? (laughs) We can do a compare and contrast, overcook, undercook, you know? Yes! You can't do it three days in a row. Yeah. That was eight minutes of me just non stream of consciousness. non Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. What else happened? Gacy and I went to go watch, and that's why we drink live, which was hilarious. If you listen to them and they're coming to a town near you, you should see it because it's it's genuinely fucking hysterical. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) 
They have beef with Zach Bagans. Do you know who that is? <laughs> who or what Lord of the Rings character is Zach uh, Bagans? No, don't give him that credit. <laughs> He's the host of Ghost Adventures. Okay. Which is like a kind of like a planet Earth style show, but it's like they just go to haunted places, and Zach is like big frat boy energy, okay. and he just tries to piss off spirits until is they do the something. Is he the one that's like, I'm standing on your bridge, ghost? Yes. yes. He's that one? Okay. Yes. I have seen clips of him. It's either him or someone on his team. There's one guy that, I think his name is Aaron, that everyone is always like, you make him do the shittiest things. Like, you made him go into that basement alone. <laughs> that's so mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they have beef with him, and at first it was just like, M, who used to be a paranormal investigator, was like, this man is so stupid. <laughs> and it started out like that, and I think Christine started like trying to get him to respond to her on Twitter, and mm. she got blocked by him on Twitter for a while. <laughs> and then um, their last tour, I, I think they like published what it is, so I'm not spoiling anything. They did a ghost tour hunt on the Queen Mary, which is super haunted, and mm. they had the reservation to stay in the most haunted, or one of the most haunted rooms on the Queen Mary for a while, and then like day of or day before or something like that, the reservation randomly got canceled, and they were, were like, okay, but like, so they got rebooked like the next day or the next right. couple days later. It turns out it was because Zach Bagans and his crew wanted <sighs> to come in. They got booted by Zach Bagans. Booted by, by Zach, Bagans. Booted by Bagans. Booted by Bagans. And Bagans had pissed off all of the spirits, <laughs> <laughs> so they were getting Could all these imagine. like crazy readings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they have real beef. Um, That's fun. And it, was, it just kept kept coming back. Who do but. we have beef with? Danny. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Jesus, kidding. just kidding. He, also, uh, just kidding. <laughs> I mean, kind of, we'll go back. Um, Danny uh, texted me a uh, mm -hmm. little fact check. Oh, um, I know, but we love him still all the same, and I do now need to issue a correction. Oh, Jesus. In the John Brown episode, I said West Virginia voted for the Republican in 2004, and then Virginia voted for the Democrat in 2008. Uh, I was off by one cycle. West Virginia voted for the Republican in 2000, and then Virginia voted for the Democrat in 2008. Here's all I'm saying is that we all got the idea. <laughs> we understood the concept. I appreciate the fact check. We all got the idea. I love him to death, and I'm sure he's listening right now, smiling at his little desk at wherever he works at. <laughs> um, he's just one of our best friends. Of course, I don't know what he does. Um, <laughs> That's the hallmark of Cr friendship. Thank you, exactly. Yeah. All I know is that you can absolutely clear the Venmo when we request you to pay your portion of the Airbnb. It's true. That's how I know about your job. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, he just can't lie, mm. I think. And it's actually so funny because normally that kind of lesson you'd only get like in fairy tales, but we get it in our friend Danny about how nice a little white lie is sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes honesty is not the best policy. Courtesy yeah. of our friend Danny. <laughs> Kidding, I love you, man. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the huge also, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Oh, shit. I think right. this releases on Valentine's Day. It does. It releases on, we were discussing this right before we got on air. Yeah. It's our dating anniversary. <laughs> she can't even have a straight face alone in the studio. <laughs> we recorded so the lost episode. Episode mm. one, mm -hmm. which was Michael Malloy. Yeah. On Valentine's Day. We did that that and the Stonewall Inn on the same Did night. we do it on the same night? God, we were so young. That's why we lost both of them. Okay. Yeah. Was that also the night that we recorded the promo in which I'm not even in the video of? No, that was later. Okay. Because that audio survived. <laughs> that video, we just, you zoom in on me. In the mirror. The, the reflection, <laughs> right, exactly. It is Maya and her ghost friend, Grant, who have a <laughs> podcast together. <laughs> so that's our, that's our dating anniversary. And then our mm -hmm. wedding anniversary is... It's May 31st. May 31st, when we publish together. Mm -hmm. um, so Valentine's Day, Maya, I mean, obviously there's an actual episode. And the theme for the next three weeks is yeah. Plenty of Fish, a play on Plenty of Fish in the Sea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on Valentine's Day? Yeah, it seems like a consumer holiday. I don't know. Just makes everything hard to get reservations at restaurants. And once you're in a committed relationship, really, what's the point? So tell me how good it is to be in a loving and committed relationship. It's, it's pretty all right. <laughs> it's really okay. It feels good to be look at Casey and be like, so we're not going to... We're not doing anything, right? And we're like, oh, God, no. What's <laughs> so funny is I'm pretty sure one of your strongest love languages is, is gift giving. It is. And I think that's almost entirely the point of Valentine's Day. Yeah. It's for you to be like, what, everyone else is doing it now? Well, I don't. Here's the thing. <laughs> gift giving, it means even more to me if you were going about your day, just doing your shit, and right. you're like, this reminded me of you, so I bought it for you. 
That's the cutest thing. If it if you feel like you have to buy me a gift, mm. I mean, if it's a really good gift, like I mean, I love a gift. Sure. Um, yeah, it's just a, like it, I, I still appreciate it. I still love it, just the same. But it's not I, Valentine's Day just feels so forced. Mm. I hear that. It's not like happy holidays. I've been thinking about you all year. Like this is something that I got for you. I or like Valentine's Day is like you're my love. <laughs> this is real, right? <laughs> Say it back. <laughs> Listen, um, you know, everyone loves a little Delulu moment. Uh, I had a relationship. We don't need to name which one. We don't need to. We don't need to run the whole tape back. But I had done the math early on. You know, when everything's bright and sunny, and realized that one of our anniversaries, because it was the 14th, was yeah. going to be on Valentine's Day. Oh, and I was like, oh, cool. Did not make it to Valentine's Day, and that's actually probably for the best. Uh, wish wish him well. But um, yeah. Yeah, yikes. My favorite Valentine's Day. Yeah. I'm 21, I think 22 maybe, mm-hmm. and um, it's I'm back in Lincoln, Nebraska, going to college, and it's in a little Snapchat because that's how college students communicated to each other when I went to college. Is um, that still how? College is that com- still how it works? I don't. It's been a while since I've been in college. Um, At least in college, I Snapchat a lot. So I sent our friends Jacob and Carter a Snapchat of me like crazy Valentine's Day night, and it's just me a whole pizza, and a six-pack of beer. I love and that. I, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank, same. <laughs> and if that's what you're doing tonight, or if that's now what you're doing tonight, you're same. welcome. It's wonderful. Same. Anyways, I sent that picture to Jacob and our friend Carter, and they both responded. Jacob specifically, like, hey, man, like, you you want to... You, you good? Wanna, <laughs> like, you just want to come, like, hang out for a little bit? Yeah. And I was like, oh, like... Mm, sure, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's fine, yeah. you know? Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And then Jacob was like, cool, like, just like bring the pizza and beer, too. <laughs> <laughs> he was using you. I mean, I think he was happy to spend the time yeah, with me. He was like, but don't, don't leave that. I mean, don't come empty handed, you know, it's <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> I love Jacob. Oh, I do too. What's so funny is both of them, both Jacob and Carter, mm-hmm. actively were seeing girlfriends at the time that they, if I am doing the math right, are now both married to. Aw. Yeah, I know. So, That's so cute. So it works out. So uh, to those of you who are with a significant other, Maya's, I guess, happy for you. Uh, for those of you who are drinking beer and eating pizza alone I'm tonight. I'm still happy for you. Well, I'm honestly thrilled for you. It means we're all having the best time possible. Yeah. It's weird I, that tomorrow's Thursday, but. I would do that now. Mm. Listen, our, our Valentine's so it may just be Casey playing games, me down here reading. That's so romantic. So, I know. I thought that's what I wanted, and then I wanted a date, a couple dates, and then I was like, oh, I think I, no, maybe not. Maybe, I mean, maybe, but maybe not. You just gotta find the right one. I think so. I think yeah. that's probably the r- truth about everything. Do you know what the other truth is? Mm. If you're gonna cry tonight, do it early. You don't want your eyes to look puffy when you go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 30, I have a translucent skin. You have to just kind of accommodate You get like a little ice roller. Exactly. You know? I can no longer eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I know there's dairy-free options. It's a principled stand. Um, I can no longer eat Ben and Jerry's Weak. ice cream. <laughs> and I guess kind of got to get do all my crying before 7 p.m. <laughs> that must be nice. <laughs> get it all out by 7 p.m. Yeah, I wish I could do that. It's not inconvenient. I'm not going to lie. It's yeah. not inconvenient. <laughs> um, I was like, what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know. It's all right. Uh, I do have a, I found a headline while I was maybe a little toasty. Can I just guess what it is? Local man arrested for stealing pounds of candy from local high school. That's exact, no. <laughs> Did you find out the, the verdict? I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not gaslighting you guys, I promise. Um, you don't need to read the top because it's like a meme. You just need to read the headline <laughs> okay. that's in the video. Read this it aloud, right please. Okay. <laughs> All right, there's the first four words right away. Um, <clears throat> Spanish porn star Nacho Vidal, who likes to advertise his aromantic candles shaped like male genitalia on Twitter, has been arrested on. <laughs> and I had doing such a good job up to that point. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> As... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Has been arrested on manslaughter charges following a man's death during a mystic ritual in which he inhaled psychedelic toad venom. I'm going to repeat that back in case you're not into psychedelic toad venom. Inhaled. Not consumed. Just a good whiff. The caption. And it resulted in manslaughter. The caption. 
kept on the name is you could have never gotten me to guess <laughs> next. what the next word of this is. <laughs> That's actually so <laughs> true. Know. I'm like retracing the whole thing. What's actually confusing too is it below it. There's a picture of a car. So when, yeah. I, when I got to manslaughter, I was like, oh, first half was funny. And manslaughter is sad. But like, yeah, it was like a car accident or something, no. you know? <laughs> psychedelic toad. Well, I both have the question as to where he got the psychedelic toad venom. Yeah. I guess as I'm like playing it out in my head, maybe it's just he had the vial of the venom. Because part of me was like, how do you have that toad and not die from inhaling it? <laughs> you know? Like, how do you, how do you just kind of have that toad there? Why was he? Why was he advertising his genitalia-shaped candles on Twitter? <laughs> They're aromantic, though. Aromatic. Aromatic. <laughs> I'm ah! so sorry to every single person alive. <laughs> it's spelled the same way. <laughs> it's spelled the same way, and we were talking about a love person. Aromatic. I'm never going to recover from that. There's an N in romantic. Is there? Well, I'm just cold reading <laughs> at the table. Either way. Like my lesson plan tomorrow. Still so funny. You're crying right now. And you knew what that like, was going to say. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have a little tear dab. I'm so unwell. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I, I love stuff like this. So. <laughs> no. Here you go. Um, my brother is kind of that way. Um, he'll send me things all the time and just caption it. You. Yes. And a lot of times they're really funny because no one maybe knows me better than my brother. (laughs) Uh, One time, though, he sent me a TikTok and it said that person who has to make the waiter fall in love with them. And that felt like a crime. It, too, (laughs) felt like an aromantic manslaughter. It's Tyler. It's Tyler. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. Tyler, we went to to an F45 workout and uh, he saw one of my friends that you know, but I won't name, uh, who's in a relationship with a woman. Mm, okay. And yeah, and so Tyler was like, God, he's so hot. And I was like, dude. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, like we know that. Right. He it's, knows that. He's a professional model. Right. Like it adds up. It becomes at first your favorite thing about this person. Yeah. And then you realize there's a heart of gold behind it. It's true. Too. I, it's, it's unfair how it hot and nice yeah. this person is. Yeah. Um, but Tyler, when we were driving home from the workout, was like, <laughs> I'm really glad so-and-so was straight because otherwise I would have been so distracted like the whole time. And I was like, babe, the reason you weren't distracted is because he's in a relationship (laughs) with a woman. With a person that we love. Yeah, straight has never been an issue for you. It's actually been in the pro column a lot of the times. Several times, yeah. I mean, are we just going to drag him here on the air? Well, he was like, yeah, you're right. Looks like him. No interest in him? My man, you are at the intersection called Tyler's Type. (laughs) (laughs) Don't leave him. (laughs) Mm, Good. Good. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, I I think we've really loosened up here. Yeah, I think that's Anyway, back to Leadership Summit really quick. Oh, right, okay. Uh, My speech is on YouTube. If you feel so inclined, don't be too mean, Grant. I've only been supportive during this entire process. Listen, I know, but I'm scared. (laughs) I think it's really sweet that you think I have time to watch any more speeches than I'm contractually required to watch right now. Listen, I thought maybe you supported me. (laughs) No, that's... That's a fair critique. I'll think about it and then send a weird text tomorrow morning. Perfect. <laughs> Can I also say yesterday or the day before? Because uh, days don't mean anything yeah, to me. Well, probably two days ago. Yeah. I was like, hey, I'm sorry that I stressed you out today. And you were like, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to be there for you. And I was like, <laughs> no, I shouldn't even ask you to be there for me. And it was just like this like layering. We were like... At one point, I was like, oh, we're both really tired. (laughs) As we just keep laying down under the other one's cart. To be like, I'm so sorry. Please roll over me. And then we jump over and then lay down. (laughs) It's nice to have that kind of secure relationship where we understand each other's love languages, but also, probably more importantly, anxieties. (laughs) I think I may have 
uh, exuded my anxieties too much <laughs> that speech. It was very kind. It was very honest. It was, yeah. But during that speech, there were a couple times, like right at the beginning, I was like, this is my first time speaking, so I'm probably not going to be as polished as the mm. other speakers, but like, ah. and there was another moment, I don't remember what I said, but I was like, so be nice. <laughs> I have anxiety or something. And um, I had several people come up to me afterwards, and they were, it was all very kind and like very wholesome. They were like, thank you so much for talking. It was a lot of what I talked about was mental health, and so right. they were like very kind, but then there's a couple that were like... I know you said to like be nice, and I just want you to know that like genuinely, you have no reason to feel imposter syndrome. And I was like, oh. Hey, I just want you to know, I can see straight through you. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. They were, they were like, like you did amazing, but I was also like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. It is. Okay, good. Thanks. I will. If you could have just texted me that later while yeah. I was in private, could I handle that compliment? <laughs> yeah, there's like multiple. So, yeah, there's like multiple comments like that where I was like, okay, Maya, maybe we dial it back next mm. time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they get the anxiety from the subtext. Right, 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 right. <laughs> anyway, and I'm, I'm wearing my, my little. Uh, it looks good. It's a good color. Yeah, and I designed this, and Kelsey was like, do you want a pullover oh. with your logo that you designed on it? And I was like, yes, I do. You. It's nice. They also got me this very cute little, it's like a map of golden with mines that like starred and it says like Colorado School of Mines Leadership Summit 2024. Oh, very cool. It's very sweet. Very wholesome. I also for, forgot, maybe, maybe forgot, maybe intentionally forgot to let Kelsey know that I mentioned her very kindly <laughs> in my speech. And there was a moment so where she's was, just in the audience as you're like, and Dur Kelsey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Point at her. And I remember thinking like, I could tell her, but like, maybe I don't want to. And then afterwards, there's a moment where I was like, I'm going to cry if I look at her. So I was like intentionally mm. not looking places. After the speech, uh, Kelsey was like, I don't remember, I don't know who brought it up. Maybe it was Casey, but Casey was like, yeah, I could have warned you. But I didn't. <laughs> to Kelsey, and I was like, I just imagine you're, you're like, and there she is, the woman who inspired all of this. And then somewhere across town, <laughs> Edgar gets red for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's so real. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love all of that. Anyway, yeah, that's all I have to say, so. Um, no, I love all of that. Um, I'm glad that public speaking went well for you. <laughs> I consider myself incredibly fortunate that I get a chance to teach it as, like, my job. <laughs> and not to get real corny for two seconds, but the way podcasting has made me better at my job, because it has <laughs> put a, a requirement mm -hmm. that I stay curious about things. Yeah. And it's, like, people who are, like... I just like to read, and it's just kind of nice to have like a little side thing. That's what this has been. Yesterday's, yesterday's lesson plan was John Brown. Today's lesson plan was today's story. <laughs> <laughs> and I nice. am very excited to teach it. I'm very Or talk about it, I guess. I'm probably not teaching anything. Yeah, like, you're going to be at the end of me like, I don't know if I learned anything useful, but I, I heard words. Welcome to our podcast. Yeah, also true. Yeah. Also true. So I'm going to get, I want to jump in if you're ready to jump I'm in. I'm ready. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you, oh, right, today's start of our new theme, Plenty of Fish, short for Plenty of Fish in the Sea. So I'm going to ask you, Maya, oh, geez. where is the most, let me say this differently, where does the rarest fish in the world live? Are we talking like literal fish? An actual fish. Where does the rarest fish in the world live? live in a sanctuary somewhere because <laughs> it's about to go extinct <laughs> boo <laughs> Listen. where in the world is carmen san diego and then also where in the world is the rarest fish in the world give me this shout out the name of a location um dubai so close <laughs> nevada <laughs> Close in spirit. Um, okay, yep, said that part. Perfect, cool. Wrong, it's in Nevada. Specifically, the rarest fish in the world lives in Death Valley National Park. Shut the fuck up. A national park that exists almost entirely in California, except for a very, very small patch of land That's in across Nevada. the state border in Nevada, and an area known as Devil's Hole. <laughs> I. <laughs> Nice. Um, have you heard of Devil's Hole? Yeah. You have? I feel like I've seen it on people's like hiking or outdoors 
thing. Interesting. Maybe. So today we're going to learn about Devil's Hole, and we're going to more importantly learn about the Devil's Hole pup fish. Shut the fuck up. I know you're like, end. Like, if, if you're, yeah. if, I know all of you are like, I'd rather be listening to Maggie Rogers. <laughs> I'm like immediately bouncing out. I promise you this story is worth <laughs> it. Okay? So, before I get into the actual details, today's sources, and there's actually quite a few of them. Uh, CBS Sunday Morning, Atlas Obscura, the National Park Service, CBS Sunday Morning, said that twice, great. <laughs> 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 Wikipedia, a very funny video by the YouTuber Caitlin Dottie, or Dottry, uh, an article by the San Francisco Gate, PBS, and viewers like you, um, which is just my way of saying, and a whole bunch of other articles. <laughs> okay. So today, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the fish, a little bit about the cave, mm. and a little bit back to the fish, and also the cave. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the fish in the cave. In the Nevada desert. Yes. In a mountain range, there is a small section of Death Valley National Park that's known as the Devil's Hole. The Devil's Hole is not very big at all. It is described as, quote, the size of a living room. Oh. Do you want to guess what the dimensions of that living room is? Oh, it's going to be either very big or very small. Just very strangely shaped. Uh, it's oh. 72 feet long, but only 12 feet wide. Oh, God. It's <laughs> so a long hallway. It's the length of one bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. Um, and scientists estimate that the de- uh, devil's hole pupfish have lived isolated in this desert sanctuary for at least 25 years thousand years. I hate things that live in the ocean, guys. Well, I good news, this them. lives in the desert. <laughs> I, know, I hate things that live in the water. I don't understand them. They don't make sense to me. And also, things like this happen. Right. Because there used to be an ocean. There we used think, to be an ocean. Uh, this is, by the way, we are already in theory, which is so funny. In theory, how we think these things got there is there was a big ocean or maybe a giant or lake. A big, a big river or and something. And then potentially yeah. something collapsed at like the lake bed or it didn't or everything <laughs> dried up. Anyways, there were fish swimming in the ocean, could have swam away, didn't. And then oh, water level dropped and now they're trapped and they kind of kept just getting like shrunk down to like smaller pools of water until we get to the devil's hole. This is a oh. picture of the devil's hole. Oh my god. Oh, I have seen this. Well, good night, folks. No, 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 no. I don't think it's that one specifically, but I have seen this uh, geographical phenomena that happens that, like, where it makes, like, a a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that I saw was off the coast of, like, Scotland or something. There's, like, a huge one. So, this hole right here Mm -hmm. that you're seeing is the entirety of the Devil Hole Pup Fish's environment. That's. If that makes you anxious, this entire episode's going to freak you out. You are looking entirely. Actually, How do people not believe in evolution? How do you see shit like this and not understand evolution? It just blows my fucking mind. I showed period seven just the CBS Sunday morning clip, which was five minutes, and they were all fascinated. And then three minutes in, it's only a five minute clip, three minutes in, a kid goes, wait, why are we watching this? (laughs) And then his classmate immediately goes, shh, and like shoved him a little. Like, so interested in what's going on. <laughs> Don't break the fourth wall. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. We're, like, we're this, all in this. This man could make us write debate cases yeah. right now, and instead we're talking about desert fish. Because I had <laughs> I had told these kids before we even got started, I was like, today we're going to learn just a little bit about the rarest fish in the world. And then I immediately press play, and it goes from like a black screen, because it's a yeah. YouTube video, to fades into the Nevada desert. And from from the back, one of my kids goes, how the hell does a fish live there? <laughs> just, immediately, just immediately like, no. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. So here's what's really interesting about the devil's, devil's hole and the devil's hole pupfish. It has the smallest ecosystem mm-hmm. of any vertebrae species in the world. Because it lives in devil's hole. It's but so small. specifically, just the first 80 feet where the sun, right, here's how, here's, these fish exist because of an accident. Essentially, a long time ago, a rock fell into Devil's Hole, sank and got caught on something around, I have the actual distance, I think around like 60 to 80 feet, just deep enough into the water 
um, that the sun could hit it and grow algae, oh. and the entire species lives off, off of the algae, algae that grows off of one rock that forms a shelf about 80 feet deep. If you don't believe in evolution, think again. <laughs> What's so crazy about this hole, though, mm. is that it goes at least 500 feet deep into the ground. Nope, hate that. We just haven't been able hate, hate, to get hate, to the bottoms hate, of it. Hate that. Oh, hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I love that I have, like, as an engineer, there's just so many fun little engineering facts that you're going to get a chance to hear I hate about. It. You, we don't know what's down there. We've already proved that a Liter new entire no. species can be there. Literally, we have no idea, and we have tried to get to the bottom, and it's just, and one of the guys that has done it before, he goes, you think you know dark. And after about 120, 130 feet, you take it like a pipe down and then you turn and you're in this room and that's dark. That is literally <laughs> my worst nightmare. I have hives right now so thinking about sorry. that. It's like, Fuck this the Marianas Trench. <laughs> this is my worst fear. It's so funny that I find, like 40 episodes in, I finally found something that I think <gasps> actually kind of bothers you. So let's go back to a cute little picture of the fish. Here's a little pup fish. Look at them. Oh, they're cute. They are cute. They're terrifying. And they live on one shelf. Like... That's just, it. just right surviving. there. And here's the thing, too. This is actually, you guys are like, I'm sure, like, these. tell me one more fact about the pupfish, please. I'm begging you. No, oh, they are really um, cute. I actually, my belief is the first semi intelligent extraterrestrial life we're ever going to find in the galaxy, I <laughs> believe it. Fish. Well, no, but it's going to be something like this. Oh, They're yeah. like, there's one rock that perfectly has all the conditions that, like, 300 species of something can li like live on and it just floating in the middle of like a moon or I something exactly like that. I know exactly what my episode's going to be. Thank you. I did not. I need to write it down or else I'm going to forget. <laughs> if it's about the other pup fish that live outside of this sanctuary. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this hole that is their whole world. Um, so in the Fata Desert, there's this, yeah, Devil's Hole. Um, scientists estimate said all of that. Great, cool. So here's here's some fun facts about the hole. Mm -hmm. The temperature of the water at this geothermal pool remains at about 92 degrees year round, not much cooler than the human body. And the U.S. Geological Survey report explains this unusual warmth combined with a small rock shelf that's just uh, below the water surface has given rise to a unique and exceedingly rare animal that calls the cave home. The Devil's Hole pupfish, who, according to the National Park Service, were named because in their habitat they appear to be frolicking like puppies. Stop. They are the most precious. They have never been predatory on ever. Yeah, so they've just evolved. They're, they're to, just so yeah. curious and trusting. It's like the first Oh. Yeah, I know. They're just, oh, hi. Welcome to our whole planet. Oh. Welcome. This is Shelf. <laughs> Welcome. It's more long than wide, and I think we think that's fun. Like, that's like, obviously, fish aren't having, con I should say, it. fish aren't having conscious thoughts. Well, anthropomorphize right, them, which I you. learned is the word that I was thinking of <laughs> those episodes ago. Staring in the mirror, anthropomorphize, aristocracy, <laughs> practicing our words. That was my warm up. <laughs> <laughs> um, they thought to be the rarest fish on earth. The one inch metallic blue fish with iridescent eyes lives only in the upper 80 feet of the cavern and spawns on the rock ledge that forms a sun dappled shallow pool at the cavern's entr entrance. They are found nowhere else. No one is really sure how they got there. According to the American Society of... Any guess? Nope. I'm gonna just attempt. Ich it's a <laughs> ichotho ichthologist and yeah, herpetologist. Yeah. Their tiny habitat is the smallest range of any vertebrate species on the planet. Oh my God. After the discovery of the fish, the cave and surrounding area were added to Death Valley National Park by President oh. Harry Truman in 1952 and they were in the batch of the first animals in America that were put on the endangered species list <laughs> they were put on the go ahead yep, go it's ahead. not even because they lost so many numbers <laughs> no, it's because there just aren't any that's exactly the point I was going to make at no point in so funny 
at no point in history we that we can them, record. Like farming them for stuff, killing them for their ivory. Well, there used to be two pools, but now there's only one. <laughs> yeah, none nothing. of that. Also, at no point in history was there ever more than a thousand of them. <laughs> They have never hit four digits in terms of population number. All right, I would die for this fish. <laughs> I know I said a lot of shit no, about fish. You're just there earlier than everyone else is going to be. This These fish are fish. so precious. But first, um, just maybe uh, a little, little creepy. Um, so before white settlers arrived in the area, obviously this pool of like hot water in the middle of the desert was known by the indigenous people that lived there. Mm-hmm. The U.S. Geological Survey writes that the first human inhabitants of Death Valley, the Timbisha people, told ancient myths warning children of water babies in the hole that would swallow children if they bathed for too long in the pond. The Mojave Project learned in consultation with tribal elders that some native people believed that shaman with healing powers traveled the desert via the underground waterways. Fuck no. That it was just like a little connection portal and to the outside to world. Everything. <laughs> Later, <laughs> why is this every story I've told? Later, white settlers who arrived in the region looking for gold in 1849 oh, reveled in the tiny desert oasis. Oh. Writing at the time, at the entrance to the valley, to the right, is a hole in the rocks which contains magnificent warm water. Nary a mention of the fish. Um, magnificent <laughs> warm water people. in which I enjoyed an extremely refreshing bath. A prospector named Louis Nussenbauer once wrote, according to the 2002 geological survey. The pupfish were like, get out of my home! I know, the pupfish are like, what are you? Ooh, smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the saving cavity itself presents a magical appearance. At the time, the pond was referred to as Miner's Bathtub. Blech. How did they live this long? Their home, their entire world it's was a bathtub. a bathtub for gold seekers. And there was never more than a small town of them. Oh my God. Like, it's actually, it's, as you research it, you're like, oh, that that's an asteroid level <laughs> extinction event for some of these, for these things. Yeah. And they just keep on trucking. They're like, great, we'll go down to the algae and wait. Do you know why there's not more of them? Why? Because we apparently are incapable of killing them. And if there was no. more of them, they'd be the threat to us. <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> That's not true. They're actually incredibly fragile little fish. We're okay, going to get into like, that later. Oh, no, they're they're they actually like... highly killable. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, like, one big concern, and this is silly, is because they have such small of a gene pool, like a cold could wipe them out. Yeah, that's one true. One fish that contracts an illness means all of the fish. I hope no one went within 100 feet of them during COVID. We don't <laughs> need to know if they can get it. What are the pupfish going to do with COVID? That's a great point. <laughs> but um, here's the thing about the water. It is actually so oh, stunningly so blue. It is in the daylight. You get it. Where it's are so they walking pretty. from? Um, so Just these, the other side? Right. Or? So you, there's really only one way to enter it, and it's you walk down like these oh. steps right here. And then you just have to turn around? In, like you go down into the water oh. and then you come back up. Okay. And so I think this is a photo taken from someone that's already in the in water. There, yeah. And these are all before people are like, what's the picture? I can only hear like I'm driving home. I shouldn't be on my phone. Um, it's obviously a bunch of like National Hikers. Park Service mm-hmm. people who work for it all. They have like backpacks and are wearing all the all the gear and the water is yeah. very blue. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so we're going to come back to the fish in a second. But before we do... We need to kind of talk about the hole for a second, (laughs) because in my research, um, I'm not really entirely sure when we started to key in to the fact that the fish existed at all. We know they become part of the Endangered Species Act in 1952, so obviously we must be aware of their habitat and how fragile it is and things like that in 1952. Um, It's probably like they didn't... Even if they saw the fish before that, they had no way of knowing right. that they were so rare. I'm just reminded that this is a time period in which they view seatbelts as optional for children. Mm, yeah. you know. And so um, we're going to first talk about um, a diving incident that occurred in the cave. Oh, and this is the saddest part of, well, is it? 
Yeah, probably. Uh, this <laughs> it's is Valentine's probably, Day. You better be careful. <laughs> oh, that's so probably the saddest part of today's episode. Okay, so um, Devil's Hole is not without incident. On a summer night in 1965, uh, an event that was reported across the country take place um, that involved several colliding factors, a hidden lake below the desert, an ancient seismic event, a group of kids from Las Vegas making a bad choice, and one of the rarest animals in the world. Oh, Jesus. The devil's whole pup fish. Um, we're going to talk about that incident real quick. But before we talk about this incident that involves four young divers, we're going to talk about a different diver for a second. Okay. By the name of Jim Holtz, who's Oh my God, older. hold on. This was the other thing I wanted to say before we started. I was, I was like, you how did you divers, know Jim Holtz? Divers. Okay. <laughs> it's February 14th where you are. If you're listening when we release this, Grant and I have tickets to Casa Bonita. In four days. On February 18th. I don't know what we're going to do. It's probably going to be a Lose vlog of some kind. <laughs> just want you to know to tune in. Which means, since this will definitely get published. Oh, no. But yeah, you're yeah, right. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, good for, yes. Okay, yes. He is, he is. I'm here. I'm listening. I'm excited. It'll be, I got the max amount of tickets, which is eight, <laughs> <laughs> and invited the, the whole basic, the whole cinematic the universe. Whole cinematic universe. It's, it's going to be Lydia, Jacob, Tyler, Danny, and then us and Casey. Right. Uh, and Sophie. And, um... Anyway, I'm very excited. Cliff divers reminded me of that mm. when I said. Excellent point. When and I, the crystal clear water. Mm, yeah. And the most endangered species <laughs> in the, the world, world, the Cosmonita gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one. Can we get a picture of the gorilla? Oh, we have to. Oh, we have to. I need to figure out who I'm going to lie and say is their birthday. <laughs> I think Lydia. She would step into that instantly. <laughs> she might actually just tell them it anyway. <laughs> So we might as well play into it. But also, Maya said it. I'm the one that responded to most of you guys on Instagram yeah. to the dozens of you who were like, what? I can fly out. When are you? What? We don't have any more tickets. Sorry, we got as many I literally as we only could. got 80 tickets and exactly. then, or eight tickets and then immediately made everyone pay me for their ticket. Oh I didn't even ask them if they could. I asked them if they could come. I didn't ask anyone if they wanted them before I bought them. I just bought them. It was like $50, everyone. We're going. Give me your money right now. It's all you can eat, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's response was worth it just for the cliff divers. Yeah, 100%. I was like, okay, fair enough. Who is he, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, they're an attraction. Okay, so <laughs> one of the divers was Jim Houts, H O U T Z. This is not one of the four divers involved in the incident. Okay, this, this is, is a, a separate one. fifth diver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. clearly much more seasoned, much more experienced, lives, I guess, in the area. Jim Houts had dove into Devil's Hole dozens of times in the mm -hmm. early 60s. And according to the Mojave Project, it was his dispatches describing the strangeness below that may have inspired the group of uh, young men, the four young men, mm -hmm. who set off on June 20th, 1965, to explore the natural phenomena. Houts first reported on the whole... Um, to the AP in May of 1964. Somewhat ironically, it was Houts who would later lead a record-setting dive in an attempt to find some of these young divers. Mm. Here's how Houts described the cave to the AP back in 1964, before the oh, incident. Oh. It's beautiful in there. It goes straight down 160 feet, like a pipe, then opens into a room, the explorer told reporters, I dived to 315 feet. Maybe it's a record. I don't know. But at the end of the tube, it opens up again into something else. We don't know what's in the next room uh, or if it's a room at all. It's like infinity. They are not in the open ocean, which I can no. kind of almost accept. No. They are under the desert of no. Nevada. They are under the ground, surrounded by crystal clear water. I am unwell. That is that <laughs> so description sorry. is horrific. Oh my god! <laughs> no, no. That's all the things we've talked about. We've talked about murder before. <laughs> this is what bothers you the most. You're an engineer. It's just so. I hate it. I hate it so much. I, I know what evolution is like. I know what what animals do and develop weird shit. Because and whatever lives down there doesn't have eyes. Has I know! There's no need for them. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it 
so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so much. <laughs> Even if there is an animal down there, what are they feeding on? You know, there's a good chance that that might be the only water, air, like surface of water, body of water in the world that doesn't have a plastic bottle at the bottom <laughs> of it. <laughs> Well, if it's a tunnel, we don't know where it where it goes. That's even oh, worse. Oh, Maya, you just you just That's wait. Even worse. That's you even worse. just I hate wait. It. Guys, I hate it so Kay. much. I'm so uncomfortable. He, he goes on to say, um, the rocky walls inside the caverns are the most beautiful stone I had ever seen. Greens, blues, so blue that they're nearly white. Quartz, bronze colors, every color in the rainbow. There's nothing to be afraid of except. Panic and stupidity. <laughs> Which is me and me, so. And so four high school friends in the summer of 1965. Panic I removed and their, stupid? Well, so I'm going I'm to remove their last names. Um, but their names were David, Paul, Bill, and Jack. Um, and they're age 19 and 20. Like, those are okay. their ages. Um, some of them work in Las Vegas. Some of them work at the local military base. They're just young people on their own for the first time. Notoriously stupid age. Yes, especially for boys. I know. Yeah. I teach them, right? And also, I think I was one once. Um, <laughs> I think. I don't actually remember. I've always been 30. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They head from Las Vegas, and the spot's only 90 miles northwest of Las Vegas. It's not like it takes you six hours to get there. I it's, wish I had known that when I was in Vegas. I would have absolutely gone. If you gone. don't think I'm not absolutely making a trip out west in, like, maybe March to go see Devil's Hole and hike a couple other places and also eat a buffet in Las Vegas, um, you're welcome to join for any of it. Party. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know if I'm invited or not. I just oh, like yeah. bachelorette parties in Las Vegas. Yes. I'm not having a wedding. Good. My bridesmaids can be whoever the fuck. <laughs> yes. And yes, however many. Yes. <laughs> it's an open invite. That's a, listen, I'm sorry. I know you guys are like, what happens in the cave? Great. <laughs> but I just, I really do feel in a way that I actually have no shame about. Yeah. Like I know how you should do Vegas. And Perfect. it's not like bottle service in the club. Oh, if that's your thing. Good for yeah. you. Right. It's just, there's a way to do it. And it almost always involves. Talk about Cantina at love three that. in the morning. Love, love that. <laughs> what if mm-hmm. we get tattooed while I laughed while we're in Las Vegas? That is something I would do with enough drinks in They're me. actually shockingly expensive to get in Las Vegas. We would want to do it locally. Tattoos are also just shockingly expensive. That's fair too. I <laughs> like to get a good one. So. <laughs> Did you know, uh, at least at one place in Las Vegas, they'll tattoo you before they charge you. Um, kind of like that a... That seems like a liability. Can't opt out now kind of situation. <laughs> like, lay down, strap them down. <laughs> get them, guys. Okay. So, um, these four people pull up a few hundred feet from the dusty road that we now know as Devil's Hole Road in Nye County, Nevada. The small bluff that hides the uh, pool turns into a footpath. Like, you can't drive your car right. past it. I mean, you could probably, like, off-road it and get on the path, but mm-hmm. you have to have to hoof it. So these four get out, and according to, the, to various AP sources published at the time, here's how that fateful night went. Three of them, Paul, David, and Bill, mm-hmm. dove into the water without wetsuits and with rudimentary mm-hmm. air tanks, nope. also known as aqua lungs, on their back. Mm-hmm. Bill's brother Jack stayed on the shelf as a lookout. So he's in the water still, but he's not diving down. He's hanging with the pup fish. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, either he knows that or not. Yeah. Um, but they're there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shortly into the dive, at an unknown depth, Bill notices his oh. oxygen supply was already running low. He mm. recalled the following day that along upon realizing this, all three divers start to head back up. But Paul never surfaces. Mm. Bill and David then frantically dive again to go find their friend. When Bill surfaces the second time, he realizes David is gone too. Oh my god. Paul and David were gone. As Bill said at the time, he got ahead of us and I lost him. I went into a depth of 175 feet and I couldn't find him. The surviving brothers drove through the the night to get back to Vegas for help. Rangers and a sheriff's search department came and attempted a rescue uh, at Devil's Hole in the early hours. Telling reporters that there was a slim chance that the missing boys may have found a sustained air Air pocket. pocket, I have a map um, of like the tunnels. Uh, this is a guess, of what obviously, the tunnels look like. but it's like you oh, go through this. the pipe and then there's this huge room and then oh, when but you are coming all those branches. out, right. And they do believe there's like a room is what they call it up there. So I'm kind of crazy to me is how old that air has to be when it got sealed Grant, down there. I'm sorry. Grant, Grant. <laughs> sorry. There's a whole area 
of air and land that has probably never interacted with our air and right. land. And it's about 90 miles northwest of Las Vegas, and you could get to it if it wasn't for the rarest fish in the world living just below the surface. What is in <laughs> that air pocket? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what is it? What's there? so funny is I'm definitely the more skittish one of the two of us when it comes to like the paranormal and things like that. So I'm just like, mm, legitimately delicious wing. And I you're like losing. Hate it. this. <laughs> what could possibly be in there? Oh okay. my god. So I'll I'll kind of speed run it a little oh bit. Oh god. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I just have hives and we'll have nightmares later. It's so, everything's okay. <laughs> I want to tell you, I really am shocked that I've managed to actually find something that like disturbs you a little bit. Like I'm I'm disturbed. I'm not like deeply unsettled or anything. I'm just, I just, I just hate it. So the search team works through the morning in 105 degree heat searching. Uh, the team's led by five divers. It's led by Jim Houts, the guy who's dived it loads of times. Yeah. And they can't find the two really divers. really convenient he was available. I mean, I think he just like lived in the he area. He just lives there? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Um, due to the tragedy in the strange corner of Nevada, Devil's Hole briefly fell into the national spotlight, but no one could really describe what it actually was. Some called it a sump pump into an underground river. Others called it an extinct geyser or a skyline to the water table. Jim Houts actually named it Devil's Hole, in 1964. That should tell you all you need to know. The only man that has that we know of that has do- dove to those depths named it Devil's <laughs> Hole? As opposed to Miner's Bathtub. As opposed to literally <laughs> any other combination of words. Guys, he he might know something we don't. Well, and then here's, I mean, oh what, God, a, man. what a prophetic thing for you to say. Literally, the next sentence in my notes is it. this. So he named it Devil's Hole, 1964, a year before the deaths. Around that time, Jim Houts suggested that the source of water there may be limitless. And in a astute prediction of the coming droughts ahead, said that it might one day save Southern California. He was like, this pool of water is crystal clear, beautiful, and limitless. And I think there's going to be a drought on the horizon. And that's Jim Houts. Now, let me ask you this real quick, Maya. And I know we're, like, stuck in, like, cave creatures. I promise you I'm not going to tell you a cave creature thing. Even if you don't, for the I'm most still part. thinking about it. What does this... For the most part? What does that mean? This, this next question. Jesus. What's the one thing this story right now, like, really needs? What's the one thing this story uh, is missing? The villain. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to take a guess? Do you want to name it? No, I don't know. A predator? Yes. Oh. Charles Manson. <laughs> Shut up. That's Shut up. That's even highlighted. What does this story need now? Charles Manson connection. <laughs> that was how Patty Hearst was where I was like, why was it? Jonestown. <laughs> if you don't know, Charles Manson... Like, oh was like the owner of a cult, and they founder of the cult, founder founder of the, owner. Uh, and, and they murdered all those people, the actress and stuff, because and he, the heir to the Folger, Folger's fortune. Yeah, and he he tried to uh, he was convinced that there was a race war coming, but it wasn't coming fast enough, and so he tried to to, to start it to start it by writing a bunch of weird ass shit, and somehow now he's the enemy of the pupfish. Um, no, actually, oh, okay. he just was also like many of us, drawn to the hole. <laughs> Pause for my reaction. Got the pace I wanted. Continuing. I um, it. Though it is fenced off completely and the entrance is heavily monitored, it has fascinated travelers for years, including the infamous and one time Death Valley resident and convicted cult leader Charles, Charles Manson. Manson. Cool. A few years after the 1965 diving accidents, mm-hmm. Charles Manson convinced his followers to set in motion a bogus race war through the Tate LaBianca murders in LA. On the run, mm-hmm. Manson arrives in Death Valley, where he becomes obsessed with finding a mysterious hole that will lead his family his cult followers. It was called the Manson family. Right. Mm -hmm. To water and a safe place to live in the desert. He wandered the wasteland for days looking for such a place. And he finally found it at Devil's Hole. 
Rumor has it he spent oh, no. three days sitting cross-legged, staring and meditating inside the fenced-in observation point near the 60,000-year-old fissure. He was sure that the waters were just blocking the door to the underground kingdom that would provide shelter and water for his group when it was needed. All he needed to do was find a way to drain it. <laughs> Given Gross. the huge estimated size of those waters, that would have been quite a feat. Yeah. And then the article ended that part with, Manson would be caught a few months later hiding under a sink at his outhouse in Baker <laughs> Ranch in October of 1969. Excellent. So, um, Charles Manson, obviously... Um, not seeing the world clearly, but he is cueing in on one thing, which is a lot of people have come to this crazy hole in the ground and been like, this is connected to something. This is connected to what's going on. And when you get there, I'm guessing this is how it was in the 1960s, but if you get there now, because the pupfish is so endangered, when you go on the walkway to see it, you actually enter a full metal cage that is 365 degrees. You are fully surrounded by metal you are fully in, in the it. container yeah. and you can walk in it and you look and there's photos that obviously the park rangers have taken of yeah. people on the catwalk looking down and it looks like they've been sentenced to prison in the desert because <laughs> they're just fully encapsulated yeah. but then they like have a fanny pack and like hiker shorts on and they have like the hands on the yeah. hips and they're just staring at devil's hole i still want to go because i love paying homage to things that yeah. we talk about but i know it's going to be like drive 90 minutes get out see it for 90 seconds go well, we got a chance to see it. Head back to the car, <laughs> drive away somewhere else. Next. Yeah, 100%. It's going to take an entire afternoon That's to see fine. the rarest fish in the world. So um, let's go ahead and talk about what some of those protections are. Mm -hmm. Over the years, security has increased around the hole to both protect people from whatever the hell's inside the hole. Yeah. And also to protect the pupfish from the people. And I just want you to remember that they are named because they are as frolicking as little puppies. They are so trustworthy. This includes the installation of a tall fence and cameras, but it hasn't always stopped sometimes drunk trespassers yeah. from invading the pupfish's home. Uh, in 2016, three men camped out at the nearby town of Crystal, drank rum and chased rabbits around the desert with shotguns at the time men will literally <laughs> drink rum and chase rabbits with shotguns before going to therapy men will literally accidentally eradicate an entire species before <laughs> going to get therapy. all men <laughs> uh yeah oh for gosh. the most part um and so they arrive at the 10 foot high fence uh that protects devil's hole, hole um in an intoxicated mischief filled adventure reported by the national park service one of the men barely remembered even being a arrested when he sobered up days later. Oh um, my gosh. They shot out the surveillance cameras, scaled the fence, stripped naked, and punched each other in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a video. <laughs> Shut up. I want you to know at one point today at work there was Devil's Hole Incident. Devil's Hole Incident 2016. You're Devil's Hole Incident. I'm to find it. They've clearly selectively released some of the footage, but I, I have it here for you right now. Oh my god. I'm so excited. First, it starts off and they are driving this go kart thing exactly like two people who are about to kill an entire species of fish. Oh no. There's, I don't think there's actually the volume. So they just pull up. <laughs> That's a Mario Kart. Car. Hunch, hunch, That's thank exactly you. what's happening. It's like right the back there. wheels are just never pointing yeah. in the right direction. Yeah. And then the video cuts out because they're inside it. And the next thing you know, they're like frame jumps. Oh, and good. Um, they are then, look for them right here in this corner. Oh, Boom, there, there they are. Three of them. They're like, oh, sure, but like they don't look that drunk to me. They yeah. start to scale down this like rock face right here oh no and then oh yeah 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 so then because it's so protected there's, there's cameras, cameras in the water and all you just see is legs 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 as he like stumbles through this fish's entire <sighs> planet the only shelf that them and 20,000 generations of their parents have ever known this man like, that was my grandmother 
turn! He, listen, they know it's him in part because he throws up in the water a little bit. No! And then also leaves his underwear there. <laughs> Um, and then I think that's why it is there the not video. a live stream of the puppet? Like, <laughs> I, it makes so much money. I actually think there maybe is now. Um, footage from the scene uh, reportedly showed one of the men vomiting on a boulder as Cute. another stripped down and lowered himself into the pool. Nope. Trent Sargent, I'm going to name this guy. Yeah. Trent Sargent, uh, the Indian Springs man whose underwear was found in the pool the following morning alongside one. Dead pupfish. No. Served a year in federal prison for charges of violating the Endangered Species Act. <laughs> we put him away for a year for killing one, one tiny fish, little fish, less than an inch long. I love. Sometimes I love our system. Right. You know, like. <laughs> so when the kids ask me, "Hey, Mister, what would happen if you just like you know threw poison in there or something?" and I'm trying to act all because they don't know I have a podcast, so I'm trying to act all chill, like I don't know a lot of information <laughs> about Devil's Hole, and I go, "Well, I can tell you this much. Um, what was the details? Uh, in 2016, a man <laughs> accidentally killed one fish, and they gave him a whole year in jail. Jail. So if you kill all 220 that currently That's exist life, baby. in the world, it's 220 years. It's a couple lives. Yeah." <laughs> I'll see you in 2020, 24. <laughs> and do you know what won't be there? The pot fell shit you killed. <laughs> or so, either of us. Right. That's, I mean, sure, sure. Who, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe the mystic waters of Devil's Hole. So who knows? Maybe they're immune to poison. So who, who, Or maybe they're just going to live forever. Or they can see at night. Maybe they're like aliens. The <laughs> so anyways, um, that is, as far as I could tell, I the here. only time in any record that I was able to find where a human has ever killed even a single, single pup, pup fish. fish. Oh my god! I'm sure we've killed loads of others. Oh yeah, we just, we just didn't, didn't record know. it or anything. Yeah. It was this a is, bathtub for a while. Guys. Um, so I guess, I mean, not to make him infamous, but Trent Sargent gets the honor of being the only person who is known for having killed a pup fish. It's a really fish. good two truths and a lie. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. So this has been fun. This has been like a fun little like ha ha how crazy of an incident. We're gonna dip back into into literally geopolitics again for a second. Okay. As long as we're not gonna talk about what's down there. So the base of water is so huge it reports seismic activity okay, cool. from we're across the world. We're talking about what's the down world. there. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, no one knows how deep the cave goes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> What? Oh, it's gonna get no. so weird. Okay, so seismic activity, and we don't. I have a video. Guys. To this day, no one knows how deep the cave goes. The farthest depth we've seen in 1991 by the U.S. Geological Survey, explorers were able to descend to 436 feet into the lower cavern. The U.S. Geological Survey reports that they saw uh, they saw down to a depth, because it's crystal clear, that they saw down to a depth of 500 feet, though they were not able to see the bottom of the cave. (laughs) One curious reason that the underground lake is thought to descend much further into Earth than other caves is the strange effect of reporting distant seismic activity that you can see on the surface of that living room shaped no! pond at the surface no! of the pond. In March of 2012, the National Park Service reported that cameras set up at the hole captured a tiny tsunami in the pond in which the water sucked into the cave before surging up four feet. Goodbye! Here's what? The, here's the video. <laughs> This is from the National Park Service, folks. Okay, so there's not an earthquake in this area. Uh huh. It the ground is steady, but this water, which is usually very still, starts to shift back and forth. We're gonna skip to about a minute fifty. So you're noticing a little bit more activity, like waves suddenly. And now we're gonna play it. Watch these rocks right here. Look at it getting sucked into the cave. And then, oh, haha, surge, just above four feet. It's washing away their gear right now. I'm gonna vomit. Here comes this the next just, wave. This is horrifying. 
Um, do you want to guess as to where that earthquake was taking place at that you oh, just saw? Oh no! Oh my God! Oh no! That uh, that earthquake that you saw was occurring in Oaxaca, Mexico, which is in southern Mexico. So roughly right here is where Devil's Hole is, right there, just kind of to the left yeah. of Las Vegas and Oaxaca. Is right here. Shut, <laughs> Grant. <laughs> Shut up. I know, isn't it nuts? You know, I'm like sometimes stories just find you. That is. I don't ever the read any most of this disgusting stuff. thing like, I've ever heard, and I watch true crime documentaries <laughs> regularly. Like, that is horrible. How low into the ground does it go for it to be able to pick up that kind of seismic activity? How low and how far? Oh, uh, Indonesia and Japan. It'll pick up earthquakes there. <laughs> Yeah, scientists say an, uh, an earthquake of stuff. She's just gone. I'm just going to read a little bit of this as she like processes. Um, scientists say an earthquake of a 7.4 magnitude in Mexico caused that phenomenon. This magnification of distant rumblings implies the water may somehow connect with the deep movement of tectonic plates. A 1987 LA Times feature on the whole concluded that the, at one time the area was lush, fertile lands and lakes and rivers. It's believed that the hole was formed millions of years ago when an ancient fissure collapsed in on itself. Oh my god. There's something magical in knowing corners <laughs> of the planet remain Is it magical? on maps. <laughs> or is it fucking horrifying? Parts of the ocean floor and deepest rainforest still hold such a revere. But to know that those unexplored depths exist in a very small hole in the desert just a few miles outside of las vegas oh. is even more beguiling that's from the san francisco it's from the san francisco gate article you can tell i've been reading off of something some of these are not my words um when the bottom of devil's hole is one day found uh oh not gonna read that last part okay i hate it i'm sorry i I also want you to know. I, 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 I want you to know I love it. Sure. Like in my in my oh, little rat fast. brain, like my little science rat brain. LRB. <laughs> LRB. LRB. I hate this. So we're gonna we're only about two thirds of the way through the episode, oh which actually God. is is nuts. I do hear it. That's nuts. We are done talking about the depth of the hole. But little little fun fan theory in the like everything in the universe has a meaning. Maybe maybe. The rarest fish in the world lives on the surface because we're not supposed to explore the cavern. That it's just like a little sign that says your government isn't allowed to explore here because of these tiny little stupid little fish that are super cute <laughs> and super curious and there's never more than like 80 of them ever and you have spent millions <laughs> protecting them and you sent a man to prison because <laughs> you sh sh shouldn't go in the water. <laughs> This is where you and I are so different. I just love a good story. That's such a good story. That's such a good story. What's down there? What is it? Grant's like, if we don't know, we don't know, man. And I'm like, it's water, and I hate it. It's like, I just think it's so cool that it's probably goes all the way to the center of the earth. Anyways, but at bop boom Oh, but sandwich. Here's the thing. Here's Here's the thing, here's the thing. Space and water are both places you cannot survive right. without specialized equipment. Right. That's my, it. My favorite part about this is it's all the fear of getting super deep into water, but also you're directly below ground in the desert. It defies, because in my mind I'm like, you're on a tropical island, but no, you're actually, you're not even on the flattest part of the desert. You're not even at the lowest part of Death Valley. This hole comes up in the mountain range. You're not even at sea level. No, 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 you're not at all. You're not even at the lowest point in the surrounding area where this whole thing comes up. Is this up. where Journey to the Center of the Earth starts? I love Josh Hutcherson. Too. And whatever the other guy's name I was. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable right now. Okay, well then, let's go back and talk about those silly little fish for a second. I deeply need to know everything you're about, <laughs> about to tell to me. I am going to have so many nightmares so, from this. During that little moment, you're not prepared for what I'm going to tell you, but in the, in the strangest way possible. Uh, I checked my phone, which has been on Do Not Disturb, yeah. and I there's a family group text kind of message, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? And um, all, there's just two text messages 
the first from my mom. We're getting ready to storm the court. Dad has his shirt off. And then from my brother, incredible. I think that means Nebraska basketball just won. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know. It could mean anything. It could mean that we figured out what's at the bottom of the... Oh, yeah, Nebraska basketball just oh, okay. won. Okay. Number 11, Wisconsin, though. That's really good for us. Grant, <laughs> tell me about the fucking cave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're actually going to talk about the fish again. But okay, yes. that's fine. Okay, the so guardians of the secret world. Shortly after 1956, a locked gate was installed in the rock. We've covered that. By 1970, uh, as the shallow shelf hard to say, but it did it, uh, <laughs> was exposed by groundwater depletion, a.k.a. like we were farming in the yeah. area. An artificial shelf was installed at Devil's Hole. It was never used by the fish. <laughs> <laughs> the fish were like, <laughs> They're like, what the fuck alien spaceship <laughs> is this? We know the one true god, and it is that shelf, and it is where every generation of our entire species <laughs> has born, lived, and died. We write it down. <laughs> How dare you try and replace our shelf? Imagine having such a fragile population that a bad algae growth could wipe you out, and humans are like, "Here you go," and you're like, "Get it out of here!" <laughs> I'd rather die a hero than live a fraud. The fish are so relatable. <laughs> I, the one thing I learned during the Jumbo episode was when you do animal episodes, just give them dialogue. Just, just give, give them, give them, them di- dialogue. Figure out their spirit, give them dialogue. Why do you think I prefer <laughs> dogs over children? I can't say anything. My job's teaching. Um, in 2005, uh, sediment was removed from the shallow shelf to encourage feeding and spawning. While the number of larvae appeared to increase as a result, the population still experienced a net decline the following year. In yeah. January 2000... They're sorry, at capacity, babe. <laughs> also, Who do you know? Could you imagine trying to have more people in an entire universe that's 12 by 72 feet also, long? Also, hear me out, hear me out. Japan is also experiencing a decline in population. It's almost like it's the same fucking shit. There's not enough <laughs> shit to go around, right? Who doesn't like to spread out? People are so I moved dumb. to West Denver. Uh, I mean, these are these are doctorates of science. I know, science. but <laughs> it just it just it's like, oh my god, it declined. So yeah, in, of course it did. In January 2006, biologists began <sighs> supplementing the fish's food supply in response to observations of poor health and malnutrition, which is apparently because of a lack of food and not because you know, an eternity of inbreeding. Um, <laughs> after vandalism resulted in the death of the fish. <gasps> In 2016, what we talked about. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, he went to jail. Yeah. The National Park Service added additional barbed wire at the top of the fence <laughs> surrounding the hole, also installing more motion sensors and video cameras. These fish... I love that. ...and their ecosystem... Are so protected. ...are also so insanely fragile. Back in the 1960s, not everyone was a fan of the animal and efforts to protect it. According to the LA Times, local ranchers in the nearby Ash Meadows area Mm. were building wells and siphoning the desert's groundwater, lowering the water level in the hole to below the shelf where the pupfish spawn. Mm. After Nye County ranchers were banned from drawing groundwater from Devil's Hole, a political feud erupted in the desert. Two bumper stickers were a common sight at the time. The first one, save the pupfish. And the second, oh god, kill the pupfish. Oh my god! <laughs> Save the pupfish came first, and then it was just life imitates art. But like, be original. Like, I actually kind of almost love the negging of the like, no, kill the pupfish. Also, it's, it's always like, it's always the farmers. I have nothing against farmers in general. Like. I grew up riding horses. Yeah, I come I, from I several up, farmers. I hear you. Why are you always so mad when anything changes in the environment ever? In their defense, they're like, I have to give up my livelihood for 200 fish none of us are allowed to see. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so all of this culminated in a Supreme Court decision in 1976. The Supreme Court was involved? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, babes. Actually, we kind of keep dragging the Supreme Court in to save the pupfish. This case was Capert versus United States. And that ruling forever, well, who knows about this current court, but at the time, True. forever protected the water level in the pool and the pupfish, who would fast become an icon of the burgeoning ecological conservation movement. According to the High County News, in protesting the ruling, the farmer's attorney told reporters, there are two endangered species in this valley, 
the pupfish, and the American rancher. Okay. Like a good quote. Like That's the, a good quote. The entire rest of Nevada open to ranching. I don't think you get ash, but a great quote. Here's all I'm saying is that I love an underdog. Right. Man, like, it's hard to, like, root for, like, the gray wolves. The mm-hmm. ranchers were mad about that. And I can understand that because right. they're predators and they do damage. Right. Pupfish. Well, I also think there's a certain element to, and I think I have heard my own relatives talk about this, where farmers and ranchers want to be responsible stewards of the land as well. But I think what they kind of have a gripe about is when they are told how to manage land from people who will never visit it, Mm. right? Like all of these, none of these ecological people, although they were advocating for the pupfish, none of them lived in Nye County, right? And so it was like... You're going to tell me how to live my life when you're a thousand miles away in this different city. That's how the government works, babe. It is how it works. And I'm not necessarily saying that point of view is correct. I get it. But like, I, I get where saying, they're coming yeah, from. I get mad when a boss who's never been to my classroom emails me what to do, and I'm not going to lose my house over it, you know? <laughs> and so I, like, obviously, I mean, this entire one, two, three, forever episode, again, no idea yeah. how long this episode no. is. Obviously, I'm team pupfish mm-hmm. in all of this. But I understand being upset about it. Um, so naturally, what do you think the U.S. government is going to try to do? Uh, take the pupfish out of Devil's Hole. Right, not all of them though. That would yeah, that just would a couple. Be dis- right, we yeah. were going to try many, many times to get to, them to breed um, in to, captivity, to form our own colonies, and cut something about that water. Just is just right. Because it hasn't interacted with any other water ever, and so it has unique properties. Guys, evolution's fucking insane, and that hole's cursed. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's taken us forever to figure out how to properly Mm-mm. colonize no. the pupfish. No. Nope. Um, due to the fear of the extinction, which was basically present as soon as we found out how few of them there were. <laughs> they were like, oh. I'm not joking. At one point in American history, there was 35 pupfish left in the world. Like, we're going to like realize in like 20 years that there's some random ass like lake, lake in no, Australia full of, full of fucking pupfish. <laughs> it's also in the middle of the desert, but the lake was just bigger. And also that cave all the, the way down. They're disconnected. They just yeah. kind of keep swimming back yeah. and forth. I mean, who knows? That's why we only have 35 that one time, because there's a lot over there. They always winter in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so, due to the fear of the extinction, uh, we started to try to take several measures to produce kind of a spare population outside of Devil's Hole of Devil's Hole pupfish to help safeguard the species, um, which is known as some word in Latin. Uh, <laughs> E-X space S-I-T-U. Yeah, I can tell you. They've exact some word in Latin. Some word in Latin. Um, some of these measures, such as transplanting the fish into a nearby natural springs, immediately failed. It's the same water trickling out of the same system, like a mile from their original home, dead instantly. <laughs> Like we fried them a That's little. So sad. The fish, uh, the fish disappeared. The one population at Purgatory Springs was destroyed by a biologist oh. as the fish were misshapen and no longer looked like devil hole pup fish. Oh. Uh, you're going to have to kind of rest in your heart that that's going to happen a couple times in this next paragraph. We are trying to protect exact desert hole, devil's hole, pup fish. We are not trying to like speed run evolution for them. We're trying to capture them genetically in this moment. And so what you're going to find out several times is they naturally respond to different environments and then change a little. And we're like, flush them. (laughs) (laughs) Evolution will do that to you. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm so proud of finding this one. I hate um, everything about this. Two attempts were made uh, to establish an aquaria populations, one at the Steinhardt Aquarium and the other at Fresno State College, though these also failed. Yep. A number of artificial refugee areas consisting of concrete tanks approximating the conditions of Devil's Hole were attempted to ensure the species' survival um, should you know, the natural population be wiped out. Um, the Hoover Dam Refugium, R-E-F-U-G-I-U-M, sure. uh, for endangered desert fish was established in August 1972 with the first 27 pupfish 
translocated there in October 1972. The Hoover Dam Refugium was successfully maintaining them for several years and reached a population of several hundred. Though, and this was wild and did not explain why, the sex ratio was like crazy skewed. Like three feet, like three males per every one female. That makes, no, no, that doesn't make evolutionary sense. Um, In 1985 or 1986, a component of the water supply system failed, killing all of the fish. Oh, God. (laughs) Nearly all of the remaining fish were then killed in 1986. That intern gets fired. I don't know if it was an intern or what. It's like they have lived in this crazy little hole in the ground in the middle of the desert forever, but like the temperature dropped five degrees gone Dead. instantly oh my god <laughs> um like not funny but a little funny you uh, know? it is pretty funny it's the same reason um, i believe horses should not exist <laughs> so so you, you ride horses evolutionarily don't make sense okay have you heard do you know horses colic horses can't burp or vomit <laughs> neither can lydia sorry <laughs> So when they got got that upsetty in the tummy, mm-hmm. they have a couple options. <laughs> they work it out. Uh, like this, they run a lot. I don't know. Okay. They walk a lot. Uh, this also occurs if they like drink too much water or eat too much when they're <laughs> still hot after a workout. Okay. Um, they can either work it out themselves, go through surgery, in which most of the t- a lot of the times when horses come out of colic surgery, they are not the same personality wise. Oh. <clears throat> Option what? three: they die. <laughs> What? Yeah. What? Tell me how that makes sense. Why did we ride them into war? It doesn't make any sense at all. Also, if you compare their anatomy to like what a human's anatomy is, not that that makes any sense, but regardless. Sure. um, They are walking on their toenails. Oh, that is wild. Yeah, and that's why they have to have them shaved. Mustangs, you don't really because they... They're Gallop able enough. to, yeah, they're able to kind of maintain them on their own. But every other horse, you have to put shoes on them and get their, literally get their fucking nails done like every <laughs> six to eight weeks. I don't even trim my beard that often. If, if you run a horse on concrete, like bare feet, barefoot or some shit like that, the outer area of their hoof separates from the inner area. I don't area want to know more of that. I don't want to their... you keep that to yourself. I don't want to know more of that. I'm so caught up on the horse coming out of surgery different. Yeah. Changed. I've I've had a couple of friends who have had horses that have gone through the surgery and they're like not as nice as like they used to be either really docile and now they're like really hot tempered or vice versa. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people won't even go through the surgery. I'm going to go back to my simple little fish. Evolution is <laughs> fucking insane. So uh, literally a water pump failed at the Hoover Dam Refugium and just All the wiped fish out were like, an it's entire not worth it anymore. colony of, peep, of fish. <laughs> um, any of the fish that managed to survive the 1985 pipe burst died during the 1986 failure. Jesus. <laughs> um, there was one lone surviving fish from the 1986 that I think was removed. No! Yeah, absolutely terrifying. In 1973, a second colony was established at Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. Amwader is their <laughs> acronym. Um, the uh, uh, Armagosa Pup Fish Station, also known as the School Springs Refuge, so it has three three names, in case you're wondering. Um, From the founding population of 25, it remained at several dozen individuals until a power failure until a power failure that year. No! (laughs) Disrupted the water flow and it killed all the Yeah, they literally can't live domestically if you're that sensitive to power. (laughs) The population increased to 121 by October 1987, but in 1990, a third refuge was constructed, this one called Point of Rocks Refuge. Historical attempts to maintain these colony of fish um, through the traditional methods have largely been ineffective. Blamed on the small founding population, because there's only ever like 200 at the yeah. time, mm-hmm. you can't take more than like 15 without really messing up the dynamics of that group. Yeah. Right. Um, Blamed on the small founding population as well as maintenance failures, the Point of Rocks refuge population unexpectedly had individuals develop back pelvic fins, which are (laughs) not found in the species that we keep in the ground. And so therefore... We had to destroy them. (laughs) Genetic evidence showed that around three individuals of the closely related C. nevendesis, which do have pelvic fins, managed to invade 
the Point of Rock uh, station between 97 and 2005, hybridizing with the Devil's Hole Pupfish. Um, they quick, those genes quickly became highly prevalent in the gene pool, with Reacher's concluding, we add hybridization to the long list of problems that have conspired against successful populations of the pupfish. I'm starting to get settings. the farmer's point. If uh, evolution is really rooting the against them. The farmers are like, if the wind blows from the east, they're dead. I don't know what you mean we can't use the water. <laughs> it, it seems like maybe evolution was supposed to... I mean, they're still alive in their natural habitat, but maybe we just let them At a certain live. point, we just started to throw things against the wall to try to save Good. them. Uh, like in... <laughs> I love... I just kind of love the meeting where this had to get pitched, and it had to be like a, no ideas, bad ideas. All of our best scientists can't keep water flowing, so like, how can we save the world's rarest, smallest species? Uh, so in May through August 2000. Six, uh, seven pupfish were given to a Las Vegas casino. Immediately incorrect. <laughs> Immediately incorrect. Yeah, they were. I mean, in, in Vegas's defense, they were given to Mandalay Bay. What year was this? Two thousand six. Jesus. No. With the hopes of understanding how to breed the species in aquariums. Uh, that effort failed. What? And, no! And by April, all of the individuals had been died or transferred away. Had died or had been transferred away. Also in 2006, six younger pupfish were moved from Devil's Hole to the Willow Beach National Fish Hatchery in Arizona, and 18 remaining individuals from the Hoover Dam Refuge were brought to Willow Beach, while early breeding efforts appeared successful and four larvae survived to adulthood, all individuals had died within a year. Possibly from a form of leukemia. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. Leukemia is not funny, but how does success. How does a fish get leukemia? How does it become contagious? <laughs> These are all things These that... fish live in a protected cesspool of like sulfur springs and like purified water. Here's kill the them. thing. Here's the thing. Leukemia would not have really been a thing back when evolution affected humans, right? Because you get leukemia, you die. Like though if whatever happened to you, you can no longer probably reproduce. Your offspring will die if they have mm. a gene or if they are also like exposed, apparently. <laughs> they have leukemia. They have been so protected that evolution now, not really a they factor. They just can't take care of anything at all. Um, so, what? So after all of these efforts failed, America was like, obviously we just haven't thrown enough money at this issue yet. So That's our, that's in, our strategy with a lot of things. In early 2010, a full-scale replica of the upper 22 feet of Devil's Hole was built in an area called the Ash Meadows Fish Conservation Facility. What about the minerals from down below? So that's the thing. They think the reason why this facility was different yeah. is it was built super close to Devil's Hole, and I think they are just sucking the water directly from the ground <laughs> and then putting it through Good. their own system. Good, good. Yeah, the refuge, quote, closely mimics the natural devil's hole, including water chemistry, the spawning shelf, the natural sunlight. Uh, it intentionally differs, however, in temperature and dissolved oxygen content. It's a little bit colder than the devil's fish hole, and the oxygen content is doubled in an attempt to reduce thermal and respiratory stress on the fish. So we actually think that where they live is actually a little stressful on their body, and we've actually, now we have, we have some notes for devil's hole, we've actually kind of fixed the temperature a little bit, and they seem to be responding well. Um, the devil's hole pupfish population uh, is taken by taking eggs from Devil's Hole, um, okay. but they are taken at a time of the year when it's unlikely they would develop into mature adults, like in winter. Like there's okay. only a certain window. So they're not affecting the general population. Correct. They're taking eggs that are their plan is like that they'll just die. They would die anyway. Right, yeah. and then they are making sure they don't. Um, they're like, oh, go, go, <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> so you are. So they are not what? only using the exact water, but they are trying to keep as large of a genetic base as possible by taking the eggs the fish are naturally <laughs> laying. Cool. Who saw this problem and was like, millions of dollars, go! <laughs> it cost us $4.5 million to build this. What?! Facility. And that was just to build it. That's not anything about maintenance and salary. <laughs> 
We have more <laughs> followers on Instagram oh, I know. than there are pupfish <laughs> alive. I don't mean to brag too much, but we had more followers on Instagram like week two. Pretty early on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, as of 2021, the <laughs> efforts at the Ash Meadows Fish Conservation Facility have been considered, quote, very successful in maintaining a colony population. At least 50 captive fish populate the refuge, with an additional 10 to 20 in propagation tanks. Um, the cost of trying to save these fish, it costs us $4.5 million to build it in 2013. Conservation efforts uh, from... January to May alone of 2006 to 2007 cost just under a million dollars. The legal case over the rights to extract groundwater concluded that the Caparit family had invested seven million dollars into a ranching operation that they could no longer use because they couldn't access any of the water. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that family's attorney decried that the Supreme Court had chosen the interest of a fish over people. <laughs> and, a, and a newspaper editor from nearby Parump, P A H R U M P, threatened to dump pesticide into Devil's Hole to kill them all. In response, <laughs> that's when the bumper stickers came around. And so oh then we end God. with two last little bits of information. The first is. In the summer of 2013, just on, sorry, in the summer of 2023, just on the edge of Ash Meadows, a company was like, this looks like a great place to explore for lithium. Yep, And there it uh, is. the Bureau of Land Management was like, go ahead. And then every conservation group was like, what? Whoa! And the Bureau of Land Management was like, oh, that's right, we weren't supposed to kill them. <laughs> and four days later, revoked the, the, the license and protected it immediately. <sighs> These fish... Uh, we got a lot of investment in them. Yeah, now they can't die. Right. And so then the last thing before we kind of wrap it up, final thoughts on today's episode. So in doing research on this, I actually found out about the Devil's Hole Pupfish because of a different video about animal populations that are so small and breeding's a real issue. Yeah. And that last fact I want to leave you with is not about the Devil's Hole Pupfish, but is actually about the Tasmanian Devils. Huh. They're like small... I think they're marsupials or like the small little Mars ground. They're not marsupials. No, they're not. But they're like little mice or, you know, they're, they're... Tasmanian devils? Yes, in Tasmania and Australia. They're like kind of look oh, like... Oh, they are. Yes, they are marsupials. That's what I thought. Okay. You're right, you're when right. you said no, I was like, Haha, yeah, that, that was No, that was no, like. in my head I was thinking of... <laughs> they're not koalas. <laughs> I was thinking of like the Komodo dragon. Koalas are also marsupials. Right, but they're not koalas. They're, they're not Tasmanian koalas. Devils. I have beef with koalas. We can talk Anyways, about Anyways, uh... The Tasmanian devil population has been so isolated for so long and is so small and is so inbred that in their population, cancer is contagious because nah. their genes are so similar that when they get into a fight with each other, cancer cells can transfer over <gasps> with almost no change in what they're doing. You want to know about the koala? <laughs> I, can't, I can't not think We're about it We're going back to pop fish in a second. Yeah. Tell me about the koala. Koala's real cute, right? Yeah. Much like the pup fish. <laughs> koala... So, you know, the human brain. I'm familiar. <laughs> what does it look like? Um, meatloaf. Yeah, it has all the wrinkles, mm -hmm. right? You know, the wrinkles are where all the electric stuff mm -hmm. happens. That's the thinky, thinky parts. It increases surface area or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Koala brains, smooth as hell. I love that. <laughs> I love it so much. Not just a like a tuna steak of a brain. <laughs> just a just dolphin a ball. surface yeah. of a brain. Not a single thought behind any of those eyes. I once had a man tell me, I like your head, it feels like a dolphin. <laughs> and I was like, get out. <laughs> Why would you say that to me? Gross. Thank you. I think I'm a Thanks. lot hotter than that. And I also less have noisy. beef with dolphins, but for very different reasons. <laughs> Not an animal lover, just her dogs. Um, I love animals. Koalas <laughs> are so fucking stupid. <laughs> They only eat eucalyptus. Right, which, which is poisonous. Yeah, which does not want to be eaten. Right. Um, you can, so it degrades their teeth, right? So here's, here's, which one do I want to start with? Here's the first fact. Koalas, if you take eucalyptus off of the plant that it grows on, put it on a plate in front of them, give it to them, they will not eat it because they don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> Another fun fact. <laughs> All other marsupials, <laughs> their teeth are constantly growing because they're right. always eating stuff that are degrading their teeth. So kangaroos, like their teeth always move forward or something like that. They're, right. All of them, either their teeth move forward or they're constantly growing because they're wearing them down. Koalas, none of that. You know how they die? 
their teeth fall out. And they starve. Oh my god. That's actually the most terrifying thing that I've... How does that not bother you and it bothers me, but the hole in the ground bothers you? No, the, the water is what really bothers me. <laughs> the water is scary. I did an episode about the world's rarest fish, and you were like, The water! What's in the water? I don't... The, the, the pupfish doesn't bother me. The fact that there is a massive, unexplored cave system that no one has been farther than... No one has seen farther than 500 feet, and it reacted from an earthquake in southern Mexico... <laughs> It's, Gross. I just want to, if I was one of the divers, I'd want to go down there with two flashlights. I don't want to go right? down there. Right. No, but hear me I out. I want someone else to go I down I want to there. go down there with two flashlights, and I want to hold on to the one, and I want to turn on the second one, and then at 430 feet or over, I just want to drop it, and I want to see how, obviously that's super bad, don't pollute, but like I just want to see how low does it go. That I want to know. I work that know. well, though. You know why? Because it hit something, and it would start rolling. No, because the, the density of the flashlight would at some point be less than the density of the oh. water, so it would end up hitting a stasis at some point. It wouldn't go all the way and down And it would just stay forever floating in space and time. On. A flashlight specifically, because it, like, isn't... Yeah, it would you just... You would need to do, like, a rock, but that doesn't glow. <laughs> right. So it's, like... Glow in the dark sticks party rave on a rock that then. Yeah, I'm sure. Joking. Like tape, get a glow stick, tape, <laughs> yeah. tape it to the rock. I'm actually measuring yarn. I think that'd yeah, be yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I just want to. I'm like, oh, how, how deep does it go? So evolution's terrifying, and koalas are a lie. <laughs> so, what do you think about today's episode, Maya? Love pupfish Thank would you. die for every single 100%. one of them. Hundred percent, good. Absolutely. We're spending millions of dollars. I would like maybe a fraction of that millions of dollars <laughs> spent exploring that fucking cave. I need to know what's down there. God, the fact that we know l- more about space right. than we do about our own fucking. Nope. What do you think no. the small air pockets inside the cave smell like? I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm so curious about that. There's got to be like, a what whole does it smell like? microbiome <laughs> that literally does not exist on our planet right. because it's never been exposed to sunlight. Right. It's never been exposed to the like CO2 that we breathe. There's like, 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 like flesh eating bacteria there that is probably. I don't. Has but what that, flesh would it eat? Well, no. As soon as it has something that organic to it, it would just like immediately take to it, like it. a flamed leaves. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> and we'll never know until we do. <laughs> The thing is, I also, and I, the, I know, I know, I'm a white man, especially who's like at the start of his thirties, where you start to do increasingly dangerous things to remind yourself you're alive. <laughs> I, I am wrong. I know. He's running a half marathon. <laughs> that doesn't so. feel dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I hate pasta tonight. Um, I am able to do stories like this in part because I know I'm not foolish enough to ever do it myself. I know I would at most get to the edge of the water and be like, I don't want to fall in. <laughs> There's no bottom. So I'm just going to stay right here. And that's why I can read stuff like this because I'm like, fascinating in a situation I know I will never be in. Ever. And that's um, that's the story. So my, uh, <laughs> my thought on tonight's title for the episode is... Well, I laughed. Part one of Plenty of Fish, Devil in the Details. I was thinking one in a million. Oh, okay. Yes. I think I like Devil in the Details. Though. I like one That's in a million, a though. But we didn't mention a million. One in a million or <laughs> devil, underdog? Devil in the Details feels like... Devil oh. in the Details is like a specific nod to Devil, and then it's also like, if you change a single one of these details, <laughs> that fish will die. And it's also like, what are the details that we don't know yet? And <laughs> also... <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, okay, that's that's what I was thinking of first. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you enjoyed oh, this God. and want to see more content, you can find us on social media. On TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, we are Well I Laughed. We're YouTube at Well I Laughed Podcast. Just Well I Laughed. Great. On YouTube, we're Just <laughs> Well I Laughed as well. Um, you can email us at wellilaughedpod at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Patreon for additional content. And I think I covered most of that closing spiel. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you for being here with us. We hope you had a wonderful day. We hope this started you off on a crazy little adventure. And um, for those of you out there wondering, oh my God, like I don't want to do Valentine's Day alone. Just be thankful you're not one of 200 of a species that still exist. Babes, we got options. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) You got to pause it. I can't say anything else.